A very pleasant good evening to our viewing and listening audiences. It's my privilege to welcome you to tonight's edition of Labor Matters. Labor Matters is the production of the Labor Department and is brought to you each week with the kind compliments of ABS television. The purpose of this program is to educate and stimulate. There are times realized when you agitate, but I'm trusting that tonight's program will not create any agitation, but will be uh, primarily stimulation and education. Uh, we're hoping that we have a very productive program tonight and that it will certainly serve to um, perk persons up as to what is happening in Antigua and the Barbuda. Uh, before we go get into the program, though, I'd just like to welcome all persons who are viewing or listening to us, whether you are in Antigua and Barbuda, in any of the neighboring islands, or anywhere in the world on the World Wide Web who might be getting the stream that um, is, is taking this program to all corners of the world. I would like to extend a special welcome to our regular viewers and listeners, and we trust that um, you will continue to give us, give us that support that you have been lending to us over the past years that this program has been on the airwaves. We want to let you know that we really appreciate your support and the kind remarks that you have passed to us as you meet us on the streets from time to time, and let us know that you are, <clears throat> in fact, watching Labor Matters. One such person is a young lady by the name of Shanice Francis from Sweets who told me this week that she gets home from work late, but she ensures that she goes and watch Labor Matters every Thursday night. So good evening to you, Shanice, and I trust that you, you are watching at this time. I'd also like to extend uh, special greetings to my cousin Jackie Baptist who is visiting us here from New York. Uh, she is scheduled to fly out tomorrow. I want to wish her a safe flight. Um, uh, she might not be watching this, she might probably be watching some of the American Channel, watching to see if the weather is right for travel tomorrow, because there might be some severe weather up that way. But you want to just wish her safe flight as long as she gets on tomorrow night. And to all our regular viewers and, and listeners, um, a very special good night to you. Um, tonight we have a very special program. We're going to have a very special launch of a, a, a very important program to, uh, to Antigua and Barbuda. Uh, for some time now, the Antigua and Barbuda government has been in negotiation with the World Bank to bring on stream in Antigua uh, some social programs that will help to improve the lives of Antiguans and Barbudans. Uh, one such program is the temporary employment program and the uh, training program, which will be on the auspices of the Labor Department. In recent times, you have been bombarded by lots of information concerning these programs. And um, tonight, we are going to be having the launch of what is known as the Employer's Skills Demand Survey, which you'll be hearing much about as we go through tonight's program. So what I suggest is that um, if you are an employee, call up your employer. It's very important that they are viewing this program. If you are an employer, call up your fellow colleagues and let them know that Labor Matters is on, and tonight Labor Matters deals with, uh, with a topic that is directly in their backyard, and they need to ensure that they are aware. So I'm um, taking the next few minutes and do that as we continue with our introductions. Uh, tonight we have on our panel uh, Mr. Justin Peer, who is the Labor Market consultant who is now stationed within the Labor Department, uh, whose responsibi responsibility it is to gather data to, to support this program. Uh, Mr. Justin Peer has wide experience in, in, in consultancy as a labor market uh, specialist, and he is the one who will primarily be launching this program tonight. Good evening, Mr. Peer. Good afternoon. How are you today? I'm pretty good, and welcome back to Live Matters. Um, this is your second appearance, yes. and I understand that you have uh, made requests for several more appearances. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I trust that um, tonight's program yes. will be one that will meet with the success yes. that yes. you are seeking to have it met with. And next to uh, Mr. Peer is Mr. Iker Stowe who is the president of the Antigua and Barbuda Employers Federation. And Mr. Stowe is here primarily to demonstrate to employers in Antigua and Barbuda that need to get on board here. Good evening, Mr. Stowe. Good evening, Mr. Williams, and good evening to the listening public and viewing, indeed, public. 
and welcome back to Labor Matters tonight. Thank and you. Um, we are having, joining us shortly, with Ms. Jeannie Charles, who is <coughs> the technical coordinator <coughs> within the Labor Department. And uh, her responsibility um, is of significant importance to this program as well. And also later, um, Mr. Pascal Kentish, the Assistant Labor Commissioner within the Labor Department, will also, be, we expect also to be joining us as he comes and gives his, his place, his role um, in this program. So we're going to just focus just a little bit on Ms. Gina Charles, who has stepped into her seat, and uh, tell her, <laughs> good night, Ms. Charles. Good night. Um, uh, let me say f on behalf of Ms. Charles and even um, others that uh, it has been a very tiring day. <laughs> <laughs> and living all the way at Johnson's Point doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, welcome um, to you panelists as we begin to um, get this program going tonight. What I would just like, um, and um, I would love to um, let Jeanne breeze up a little bit, but I don't think I can because um, uh, we need to start from the top. And I'm going to just ask her, she has done it before during the course of this week, possibly last week when they're on the media blitz um, and, and uh, educating the public. Just give us a little bit of information about this World Bank project. Okay, good evening. The public and social sector transformation project is a World Bank finance project that the government has proposed to address certain a number of, of, of issues within the public sector as well as within the social sector. There are four components. The first being public sector transformation, which we have talked about for a, a, a little while now in Antigua and Barbuda. The second is social sector transformation, and we're looking at those programs that benefit um, the more underserved communities here. Um, persons with levels of disability, persons with very low income. We're also looking at labor market programs, um, specifically active labor market programs with, the, with an aim of increasing the employability of persons between the age of 17 and 50. In addition, the project assist in creating a, pro a project management unit with responsibility for general oversight of all of these projects. So in a nutshell, the public and social sector transformation project is a, spans from the public service to the social sector. Okay, and as the technical, technical coordinator, um, who was recently drafted in uh, under yes. this project um, at the Labor Department. What is your specific role? My specific responsibility is for active labor market programs. And I have general responsibility for oversight, coordination with the various technical assistants that will come in in the forms of consultants. And prepare, at this point, my role is to prepare Antigua and Barbuda, meaning the government through the Labor Department, to be ready to enter into a loan agreement with the World Bank to support the programs that will benefit low income, low skilled persons between the age of 17 to 50, as I mentioned previously. Okay, Jeanette, catch your breath. <laughs> and uh, now I'll switch to Mr. Justin Peer. Mr. Peer, uh, you have been on this program before. Yeah. But, um, you know, as time changes, so does the audience. And uh, we just like you to let us know um, what is your role, your specific role um, in this um, um, active labor market program. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, m my role is to coordinate the, uh, the survey. Uh, I, I am in the position of, of interviewing persons. I will be able to um, you know, contact all of the stakeholders 
to um, promote and to to publish and uh, to do all of the the uh, technical work uh, in regard to their their survey. Mm -hmm. So um, you are primarily the person who is responsible to ensure <coughs> that the right kind of data yes. um, is captured to influence what happens with the program generally. Y yes, yes. So what I, what my role is to <coughs> look at uh, the landscape of Ant of Antigua, to look at the 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 in, uh, the situation with, with uh, employment look mm -hmm. at the, uh, the entire the, the sample frame of of the total number of, of employers l um, find out what will be the best sample to uh, to use I will uh, analyze the sample look at, um, send information out to their prospective uh, um, um, firms and when that information comes back analyze it and make certain uh, uh, cal cal calculations and um, Okay. So how long have you been conducting surveys? Well, we have um, been conducting surveys for a pretty good, uh, a pretty long time. Um, we um, are part of a, a wider consultancy where our company, uh, we provide, uh, we, we conduct many surveys. In fact, um, we just last year, we conducted the first Labor market needs analysis survey in the in the uh, OECS. It was done in Saint Lucia, so it was so now. Um, so this is under uh, our belt. So we're here mm -hmm. to do the labor market, uh, the the employer skill demand survey in Antigua, and hopefully when when that is finished, I think we I think Grenada also has one. And I think that also we uh, have some uh, other assignment in um, in um, Vietnam uh, sometime next year. Okay, so the, 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 the specific, the specific uh, purpose for this program tonight is to launch that employer's labor demand survey. Yes. What is that? Well, uh, the survey, a uh, labor demand survey is, is more or less, it's a, it's a survey to, to determine what are some of the en en employment Gaps and employment trends within the uh, within the um, country. We also need to find out, in terms of the since that our specific uh, mandate, in terms of reference, is to find out for the 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 TEP program, which is the the temporary employment program and and the training program, to find out how what the public thinks, what type of training is um, needed, what type of what the situation with the the. Um, uh, employment. What uh, what type of um, um, what what is needed on, on the ground so we could be able to make uh, uh, informed decisions. Okay, so it's basically like a, a needs analysis for the employers. So they let you know um, what they need, and then the program trains persons to satisfy those needs yes yes it's basically the we will we will need to know f for example well this is the this is uh, in in Antigua and Barbuda I, I really wanted to congratulate the the government in, in sort of taking that stand because this is this is this is history because this is the first time in the history of Antigua that uh, the government is is embarking on uh, uh, employer demand survey and we now can know scientifically what is the situation with unemployment in your um, in your country? Where the jobs are, where to look for jobs, where not to look for jobs. What are the 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 future trends? How can the the temporary employment program and the training program uh, as, uh, assist uh, persons in uh, in terms of training? Who needs training? What type of training they need? So 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 and so the the the, the survey will will help people to, to okay. do that. Yes. Mr. Stowe, as an employer, do you think that this is something that is needed in the country? Have you, in your experience as an employer, had situations where you had the wrong fit, you couldn't find the right people, and so on? Um, how do you think this is going to help? It's a, it's a loaded three-part question. Sure. <laughs> Indeed, this is a very timely initiative. In fact, we are not only looking at the, the aspect whereby you now need to understand the job market. But the fact that the, even the ILO last year, <coughs> after having done some research and some analysis,
pointed out that the employment among youth, or shall I say unemployment um, among youth, was worsening, and that youth were three times likely not to get employed as compared to adults. So what does that say? That says that we are going down the wrong road because every year we have graduated hundreds of young men and women who eventually would be either unemployed or be engaged in activities that are probably not well desired. So if I were to look at your question, the answer would be a resounding yes, that we would have, as employers, found wrong fits or square pins for round holes. Now, it is critical that as the economy stands at this point, eventually we will emerge from the crisis. When we do emerge, what do we do with the situation that we're facing? We will be facing uh, uh, even a mammoth task to one, start to uh, create the awareness, start to identify whether it be the individuals or the skills, and probably start to even identify the new jobs that need to become available because of the new direction, whether it, because, whether it is because of technology. So now is the time for us to start to uh, look at those initiatives and to understand the market clearly. This is why this initiative is even more so important and is even more so timely. Okay, so I, use, I, I, I hear you, but are you suggesting that um, in the time of crisis um, is the best time that could have been selected to conduct this type of program? Correct, and, and you've said it, because you know in every crisis there is an opportunity. And I see this as an opportunity for not just the, the labor department, but for employers to gather that so critical and much needed data. And that is why the Employers Federation are here to endorse this, this uh, initiative fully and to encourage every employer to get on board and to be part of this, this initiative. Okay, and I think, I think the program needs that, that type of, well, your image for one, and your endorsement certainly should go a long way in ensuring that Mr. Peer here has a smooth job going forward um, with um, his persons. Um, Peer, um, do you, have you, it has, is there gonna be a, a hands-on persons actually going out into the field to assist in this survey? Okay, uh, well, that's a good a good question. What normally with uh, surveys like like, like these, you you will have uh, enumerators, a person going out on on the field. However, in in this survey, uh, it will be self-administered. Okay, okay it, uh, we it will uh, emails will be sent to the the employers. Uh, however, we would have um, telephone enumerators in, in if you have any challenges or. Uh, you you can you can call the uh, the labor department and we will be able to as, uh, assist you. Okay, um, so um, there isn't any scope for anyone to go to employers. Yeah. Is that isn't there at all. Yes. Or is that is the opportunity? Yeah. Yes. 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 If you have challenges, yeah, yeah, we we can definitely come to you. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. Um, so um. Well, I, I think um, from, from Mr. Stoll's perspective, he indicated why he thinks uh, an de employer's demand survey is important at this time. I don't know if he covered all the points that you as the person who's conducting the survey um, would want to cover with respect to the importance of this survey at this particular time. Okay, then. Well, that's a, it's, a, it's, it's, very, it's, it's a very good, good question. The, an employer skills, an employer skills demand survey. Uh, it's 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 key in terms of 
development. In most countries, in order for you to, to move from one stage to, to the other in terms of knowing what type of human resource pro, uh, you need for, your, for your, um, your, your country, you need to conduct surveys like, like um, these labor demand survey, employer skills, uh, skills survey. Because it's the, it may more or less, it's the first stage of, for serious development. I mean, if a country is serious about developing, I mean, what type of uh, resources you will need in five years from now, 10 years from now, mm -hmm. I mean, this is, is, is what, that's w what you do. And uh, as I said, you know, I wanted to, to, to thank, you know, the, 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 this administration for, for embarking on a survey like this, because what we're doing today in Antigua and Barbuda is really creating history, because this employer demand survey has never been done in the history of Antigua. So that's why this is very, very in, uh, important. And that's a very interesting point you're making there. If it's never been done, that means, yeah, you suggest that we have been just hitting and missing, uh, hit and miss, uh, at, um, way of trying to fill, fill um, the, the, the gaps that we have? Yeah, well, technically, yes, because what is happening is that sometimes that, that's why you see, uh, for example, there's so much uh, you know, unemployment, because we do not know what employers need unless you really ask them. <coughs> so we just assume, yes, you know, so I go, I go to study, this this subject and and hopefully when I come return I will get employment. So wouldn't wouldn't that be wouldn't the employers have a responsibility in um, somehow saying what they need and working together to to influence um, the kind of things that they need in order for them to be more productive in the workplaces? Of course, yes, and, and that's why the survey will highlight the, those needs. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me welcome Mr. Kentish. Um, good evening, Mr. Kentish. Good evening, and uh, I'd like to apologize for being late, but it was for <laughs> a worthy cause. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was assisting one of my daughter's school with a program that they were having. Okay. So I'd like to also take the opportunity to thank the, those who attended the program in order to uh, assist us in raising some funds for the school. I notice you like to advertise that school to get them come here. I have to play my part as a, as a peer. Right. You know, I'm a part of the PTA, <laughs> and so the PTA supports the school, and so you just got to do what you got to do. All right, all right. Well, we, we, we're happy that you were able to make it um, before we had gone too far into the program. Um, I have been listening to the you know, I have a lot of time behind these days, so <laughs> <laughs> so I'm able to listen to more of the Good Morning and Tigers and, and, and the coffee breaks and those kinds of programs that uh, you folks have been on um, for the past week and last week and so on. Mm -hmm. And I have heard you being addressed not just as Assistant Labor Commissioner, but you were given another title. Um, as it pertains to this project. <laughs> Could you just refresh my mind as well? I can't remember that offhand. Uh, key project implementation leader. Yes. That is, we have a team within the Labor Department mm -hmm. that is um, overseeing this project, and they have um, chosen me to be the leader of that team. Uh, what is the function, primary function of that team? Well, we have the consultants on board. We have the technical coordinator who is the lead consultant. Then there are some other consultants that would be um, coming on board. For instance, Mr. Peer, and is the, who is the labor marketer specialist. They're supposed to be a senior curricular uh, consultant and a management information system consultant. While Ms. Charles will supervise those consultants. My job it is to supervise Ms. Charles <laughs> and uh, make certain that what they need, they, that, that their needs are met. Organize various things, the training is supposed to be done, make certain that the training venue is organized okay. and do any and everything to assist them in executing their work. Okay. And then provide uh, the necessary reports to the project um, management unit. 
so that they will in turn will be able to do the necessary things in, ter in terms of providing the finances and so on to execute the various okay. aspects. So you and your team has a critical role well, and that ought to be so because at the it end, is a at the end of the day, it's a labor department program. Right, right. So you have to have that critical role in ensuring that these folks get the job done mm -hmm. by supplying them with whatever tools and support that you are able to supply them with to, to, for that. Correct. Okay, that's good. Correct. And Ms. Charles, how, how, how has that been going? It's been going quite well. Um, I would have joined the team a little after they would have commenced a few activities, and I have found what I specifically like about the Labor Department team is that they are dedicated, they're committed, and they're interested. Let me give an example. Um, tomorrow we're going to start, Mr. Pierre will start training persons um, to become interviewers or enumerators as we call them for the Employer Skills Demand Survey. We had identified probably four persons within the Labor Department that had experience interviewing in, for example, the census. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day today, I got a call that said, Ms. Charles, there were 13 persons from the Labor Department that want to participate in the training. That's good, that's good. That shows that persons are saying that they're realizing the whole intention of these types of funded programs. It's not just for our, us consultants to come in here, do the work, and walk away. That's the waste of the people's money. It's for the persons and the departments and the ministries that are being assisted to gain and increase their knowledge and their understanding of the various steps and activities and tasks that have to be taken in order for this process to continue. Um, we should not find ourselves having to pull together external consultants mm -hmm. outside of the Labor Department moving forward every time we need to conduct certain activities. So I am impressed by the Labor Department. I am honored to work with that team. And, and Mr. Kentish, he's a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that for sure. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's good to hear that um, you're getting that type of response yes. um, from the team because that would definitely demonstrate a sense of ownership yes. of the entire project. And certainly you have some measure of continuity yes. um, mm -hmm. going forward. Uh, Mr. Stowe, I know. Um, you have a whole lot of sitting there, no, but every now and then you have to come in and encourage the employers out there to Bile to means, bile means. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now let me let me just ask Mr Mr. Pierre a question here. Um you have been in Antigua for about four to six weeks now? <laughs> yeah, yes, about, 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 about six weeks, yes. And I want to suggest and believe that you have been as a astute um person who uh, has conducted many surveys. Yes. Um, I know that people don't just conduct surveys on paper, but they conduct surveys with their eyes. They've been looking around and they have been observing and they have been asking questions here and there. What has been your observation uh, with respect to employment in Antigua, your, your findings? What have you, um, what you were able to, to show us? Those of us that have been here who, have, who might not um, think that what we're seeing is there's anything wrong with it. You might have come in and as an outsider and as, a, as, as, an, as an expert as well would have identified something. What is it that you might have identified? Well, well that, that's, uh, uh, thank you very much. I, what, it is very surprising is that what I'm, what I'm seeing is that um, there are a lot of opportunities here, a lot of uh, job opportunities in the country. Um, Could you repeat that? <laughs> I, I, say, I say that there are a lot of job opportunities in, and as we speak today in Antigua and Barbuda. Okay. Antigua, yes. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the, I've been able to interview ma many persons. Actually, uh, yesterday we uh, went in the process of doing, conducting a pilot. So we went to a, so the, a, an establishment, and uh, the person was, was saying, when they fill out the form, mm -hmm. he said, well, you know, yes, sir, you know, we had a, a, an opportunity, an opening almost a year now. It hasn't been filled. Uh, yeah. so, so, you know, we are seeing that trend, that, that there, there are jobs, okay, there are jobs, but, but, but um, persons are not sort of looking for, you know. Is it, is it, does that come back to, Precisely what you are about to do, or you're trying to find out, is it that the job jobs are available, 
but persons are not equipped to do the jobs? Uh, yeah, I would say yes. Uh, a lot of jobs are available. Uh, not only persons are not uh, are ill-equipped, but also persons are looking for jobs in the wrong area. Okay, so the jobs that are available are not necessarily the jobs that we're looking for. Yes, because they might not be equipped for those jobs. Yes. So if you're not equipped for a job, you won't you won't go looking for it. Well, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yes, you know. Okay. Or is that only equipped? Yeah, you're yeah. not interested <laughs> in that job. Or you're yeah. not aware yes. that a job is available. Mm -hmm. we're, by, by saying that persons are not equipped, we're assuming that these jobs, that these tons of jobs that are available are actually made known to the general public and to persons that are searching for employment. I know that you all at the Labor Department may find, especially when you're um, looking at work permit applications, the chances that the positions were actually posted are slim to none. So whether or not someone is available is only dependent on whether or not they are aware that an opportunity exists. You will have some, some establishments, of course, that get resumes in droves mm -hmm. day after day after day. Some might be for the same type of employment, same job position, and we have to look at how persons are graduating from school and where jobs may have collapsed over the past three to four years to really determine why certain positions are highly sought after and others are not. Um, but I think that's, that, that's where I'd like to see. I, I'm looking forward to this survey identifying what jobs are actually made known to the general public, mm -hmm. how they're made known to the general public, because some of us, some costs are prohibitive um, for posting in the in the paper. We know that, you know, not that their costs are wrong, it's the market rate. But that market rate may not be something that every employer can access. So you're, ha you're talking about a $1,300 for half a page, and most persons may not be able to afford that, especially in these critical times. So how do you spread the word about openings and sometimes it's just that you spread the word you talk to one friend or another friend or a colleague and it may stop there and you're stuck going I can't get anyone for my job but have you contacted the Labor Department and asked the Labor Department to share information with job seekers the Labor Department has a one-stop center where active job seekers register um, while they do not have a million and one registrants, they have a good enough number of persons that are actively seeking employment. In my very short time at the department, I see some of the same faces coming in. You know, is there anything yet? But I don't see employers sending in these tons of jobs that are available. I don't hear the employers sending those in. So you can't expect to get persons to fill positions when you don't let them know that positions are available. So we, so I am looking forward to the results of this survey to see if indeed there are tons of available jobs, and I, and I mean non-seasonal, mm. that just mm. b become available when it's tourist season, but tons of jobs that remain. Um, unfortunately, at this time, it's not a survey that also measures whether what the employer is putting forward as their qualifications and expectations are really what's necessary also because we we can't assume <coughs> that every employer that posts a job not discrediting their knowledge of what's necessary but personally i've seen some postings go out that ask for certain levels of certification and when you sit back and analyze it you realize that it's it's a little off base from what the person is asking for and they'll never get that job filled mm -hmm. mrs Stowe, is this a good place to jump in there yeah i i, I agree with with Jeanette and I think also to traditionally we would have gone to the newspapers we would have uh, as Jeanette suggested made a phone call or get it from the grapevine and probably once we have decided or, or we have uh, found the impetus to have the job center type set in where you have the storefront if you like where someone could walk into an environment and and look at several jobs being posted on on the wall or maybe on, the, on, on a computer or, or maybe sit with an individual who is at a desk to discuss uh, their, their skill sets and to get feedback. 
then we probably would have a different type of environment where individuals now can, can be best fits for, for certain jobs that are available. And of course, the availability uh, then becomes even more known because uh, what, what is the, 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 the largest question or the biggest question that we, need, we would have to ask ourselves is what constitutes availability? Is it that we have jobs that keep recurring in the same sort of class or in the same area? Is it that we have jobs, and, and uh, when I say class and area, I mean, for example, in the service industry. And is it, is it a temporary job? Are they temporary jobs? Are they short-term jobs? Are we looking for long-term jobs? And, and uh, again, uh, we go back to the thought that no employment is long-term anymore, as it were. But at the same time, uh, there are individuals who may be looking to be employed for two, three years, or there are individuals who are looking for career positions. And that is where I believe we need to have a structured approach. And I'm sure coming out of this, this new initiative, we'll start to get to that area where we now have, uh, where we, individuals are more comfortable with walking into an environment and asking the right questions, seeking the right answers for certain questions, and understanding what jobs they're looking for or what the requirements are for the jobs that they really want to be fitted in. Yeah. Based, on, based on your experience, Mr. Stowe, um, as an employer, and also as the head of the Employers Federation, and I'm sure you'd have been able to get feedback from your membership, um, do they have great difficulty in finding the right persons to fill vacancies? Yes, indeed. The, the, well, the, the, the great difficulty may not be the, the, the question or the answer, but there is some difficulty in filling a lot of positions, and for various reasons. Uh, because, again, it could be the, that the individuals who have the skills may find that they may, may be underemployed if they were to take those positions. Mm -hmm. yeah. It could also be that where, they, where, where they're coming from, the, the change or the configuration of the job may not necessarily be what they want to do. Because, again, the job description dictates the job that you're going to do. Now, if you have done that job before with a different job title but a similar position, then you may not necessarily be inclined to do it because of the remuneration package that it would attract at this particular point in time. However, depending on your circumstances, then you are compelled to take that job because you, you, have, you, know, you, you have no choice but to do so. So again, the new approach, which is that of the, of the survey, would get to the bottom of all those. Uh, issues and provide the, the necessary data that would, I believe, fix you know those little challenges going forward. Okay, and Jeanette, you you I see a mouth moving up there uh, when Mr. Stowe was making an earlier point. Do um, uh, you, you still have that thought? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Okay, we just like to remind our viewers and listeners that you are watching Labor Matters, and uh, tonight we are going to be launching what is known as the Employer Skills Demand Survey, which is a survey which will support the programs that you have been hearing about all week, the training program and the temporary employment program um, that are on the auspices of the Labor Department and being um, funded by, by the World Bank. On the panel tonight is Mr. Justin Peer, who is the labor market consultant in the labor department, uh, Mr. Aker Stowe, the president of the Employees Federation, Ms. Gina Charles, who is a technical coordinator at the labor department, and Mr. Pascal Kentish, who I now learn is the key product, project implementation leader. That's a powerful title. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, and and um, we we uh, we are, let's let, let, Mr. Kentish. Um, we have not heard much from you. I know tonight is not your night. Tonight is really Mr. Pierce's night. But um, <laughs> I would just like you to just give us a brief overview of what this is and um, how is the, the the temporary employment program and the training program how how, how they going to work. 
Um, well, let me start with the temporary employment program. Temporary employment program is geared towards employing individuals, nationals, between the ages of 17 and 50 years on sub projects that organizations within Antigua and Barbuda, whether they are public organizations, that is, statutory bodies, or even uh, a ministry, um, community service organizations, or uh, non governmental organizations, projects of a public nature, pro projects that will benefit the public. And we will hire individuals to execute these projects. They will work for six months. They will be on the program for six months. Um, they will work five hours a day, four days a week. On the fifth day, they will undergo some life skills training. They will be paid, and all the strappings that go with employment will apply to them. That is, the deductions to the various statutory bodies will be made from their wages. Uh, the one-stop job center will serve as the um, entry point for these um, beneficiaries. So they will make their applications to the program through the one-stop job center. The one-stop job center will do the filtering of um, the beneficiaries to see whether they will go into the um, temporary employment program or the um, training program. Mm -hmm. So there's some work to be done with respect to the One Stop Job Center to get it um, up, up to par. And you mentioned that there are some entities that you are going to be looking at to assist with these sub-projects. Mm -hmm. um, first, do you have these uh, entities been identified? And if so, has any of those entities um, as yet committed themselves to partnering with we, we have had um, preliminary discussion before the consultants came on board um, because this project um, has been in um, the planning stage for a few years now, since about 2010. And so the Labor Department from the inception has been meeting with um, various um, organizations to find out whether they, are inter they would be interested in um, such a program. Um, that work is to continue. Uh, um, I think that is the remit of the um, technical coordinator. So the technical coordinator will now have to follow up on those initial work that the Labor Department's team um, did um, over the last few months. What has been the interest so far? Well, so far the interest has been good um, from some of the organizations that we have um, approached. Um, we, we spoke with uh, an entity like uh, St. John's Development Corporation, the Board of Education, National Parks. We had some discussions, I think, with, with Lions and some of the other community service organizations. We've had a discussion. They show some interest, but um, it's now to get down to the details of um, what, what, what it entails because um, we would have to know, <coughs> do some training with these organizations to show them how to um, prepare the sub project, the proposal for sub projects. And they have to also show that they have the ability financially to execute these projects. The, um, the project will assist with some um, financing, but um, they have to um, provide the um, greater amount of funding to uh, execute the, the projects. Okay, and um, how soon do you expect things to roll out? For example, how soon do you expect the first group of temporary em <coughs> employees to be on the job? Well, that depends upon the signing off of the loan agreement uh, between the government and the World Bank. Okay. And so when that is done, then uh, we move into you now um, advertising because we are still in the preparatory stage of the project. We're getting all the uh, mechanisms in place for the project to flow 
and flow smoothly. For instance, there's supposed to be an operations manual. This again is the remit of the technical coordinator. And so she's now currently working on that operations manual. And so that operations manual will set out how things would go. And so that is, once that is in place, then we're able now to advertise and um, ask persons to come in and register with us. Um, in terms of the One Stop Job Center, the um, setting up <coughs> and properly uh, organizing that, the monies for that are under the project itself, mm -hmm. not under the, um, the project um, preparation okay. advance. So, that have to wait and so we have to wait until that is done to start working on it. But the preliminary work for the operation of the One Stop Job Center is is in progress right now. Okay. Because no. I, I, you're going to hear me refer to the technical coordinator <laughs> a lot, because a lot of these things are um, her charge okay. um, in terms of reviewing the current um, One Stop Job Center that we have, and to make recommendations mm -hmm. for its um, improvement and, and uh, proper operation. Okay, um, if you have time, I'm going to go to, go to Justin because he's just getting the difficulty he wants to get this his, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. question. <laughs> 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 and if you have time, I'll come back for you to say something about the temporary, uh, the, the training, training program. Training program, training program yeah. And then for Ms. Charles to, to say a little bit about Well, well let me just say a little about it before you, you get to um, Mr. Peer. Mm. Because Mr. <laughs> Peer's work <coughs> is primarily in connection with the training program. Okay. Mr. Peer's mm -hmm. work, he would be um, carrying out this survey to find out what skills employers need. From um, acquiring that information, then we would now set up training programs to train persons for the skills that are available that persons are not trained in. And so it is the greater part of uh, Mr. Pay's work is the temporary, sorry, the um, training yeah. program because it's targeted training. As, as I said before uh, on uh, previous programs, this program is not a program where we intend to shoot in the dark. We intend to be guided by information and statistics. And so once those information are acquired, then we can now do the necessary things to get persons trained to fill these vacancies if they do exist. Okay. Right. And then uh, I, would, I would love to hear a little bit on um, Ms. Charles' um, operations manual. Um, but I'll let um, Justin Start a takeover now. Um, how difficult is this um, survey? Is it uh, user friendly? Um, would employers um, look at it and just put it aside um, and, and not fit? How, how user friendly is it? Well, I, I think that the, I believe that the, the results coming in from, from the pilot seemed that it is very easy to uh, fill out. Okay. On average, it would take about 20 minutes to about 35 minutes, you know, minimum, you know, to um, to uh, fill out. Mm -hmm. We had um, certain uh, employers fill it out in like 15 minutes. Some fill it out in 25 minutes. Some fill it out in 20 minutes. But we believe that between 20 and um, let's say 35, it's an average time. It's uh, yeah. okay. Um, uh, and I, I, I take it that there is also going to be a sample of employers that will be chosen to for this survey. Yes. Um, yes. What is the scope of your sample? Is, that, is it going to cover a variety of, uh, of establishments? Um, are all the establishments going to be in St. John's or there's, are there some in the rural areas? Uh, how, yes. how, how, how are you looking at that? Well, the scope of the survey, it's uh, uh, on the island of Antigua, excluding Barbuda, but it'll it comp uh, comprise all all sectors, okay. All of the sectors, um, whether it be hospitality, agribusiness, ICT, construction, manufacturing, transportation, mm -hmm. trade, creative industry, marine service. So it it will be for all of the um, all of the uh, sectors. Yes. Mm -hmm. How many how many um, business places are you targeting? 
okay, we we got the, the the sample frame from the the Social Security Board. Uh, it's about f uh, from a, the sample frame of around 4,200 employees. We will we will target uh, 210. 210. Yes, 210. And um, based <coughs> on your, I'm not questioning your, mm. your thing, but that, I'm just saying based on your experience of the sample. Yeah. Um, 210 out of that number is a good, good yes idea. yes I think that it will give you a, a good good uh, idea as to it's a, it's a representative sample mm -hmm. and um, we have a methodology that we use for the labor uh, for conducting uh, employer skills demand survey and so we, we would uh, we will adopt that um, method there also uh, how would you Present. Um, how are you going to be <coughs> presenting tonight as, at, at, at the launch? Yes. Um, people expect to see something dramatic. I think that, that we, yeah, as, as I said, you know, we are, we are uh, creating history because, uh, as I said, you know, it's the yes, first time. It's the first time it, it is done in Antigua and Barbuda, the, the Employer Skills Demand Survey. And um, the, it's it, it's the uh, we there are, there are eight sections in the uh, survey, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, eight sections. Uh, the first section it's about the uh, the firmographics. It talks about the the um, the company, um, who is in the who is the company, who who what type of establishment it is. If you have a head office, where what you, what your address is, your your location, who is filling out the um, the survey. So basic information. Yes, you know, what type of uh, economic activity you are, you the, the company. Um, deals with, and um, what 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 type of incorporation you are, either whether you are a sole proprietorship, you know, public company, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, et so that's that's the first part, and that's very easy. Everyone knows that. Okay, <laughs> then we go to section two, which talks about employment. So we want to know for for the purpose of, of our analysis, what type of um, uh, how the, you know, the, the type of employment, how many persons within your organization. Okay, we want to know um, what type of, you know, so is it um, you, how many managers you have, how many, uh, um, you, know, you know, service persons in the service industry, so persons in, in, in the technical field. That we want to know the, the, the total number. In, in addition, we're looking to find out the uh, gender. What, 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 what gender? <laughs> so, for example, you may have uh, five, um, five cooks. Okay, you may, you may have uh, uh, five cooks. You know, you may have uh, twenty administrative person. You know, so we, we need to, at the end of the end of the day when you total it up, mm -hmm. it will tell you the the number of persons within your. So you are interested <coughs> in the gender spread um, in each establishment. Are you going to be? <coughs> are you going to be looking? First, first, first of all, is the is the gender going to be an issue with respect to this um, survey? Because I don't, I don't see gender um, um, is going to be saying that um, it's going to be saying that um, okay, um, we don't have this because you don't have a certain gender mm -hmm. to fit it. Right. right, right. Well, well, it's it's well, it it would have an in impact, you know. But but, but what we 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 doing? We are testing all of their variables mm -hmm. so so that we the information will be that we provide to the labor department will be sufficient so that they they can make informed decisions and scientific decisions okay, okay. For I, when uh, in addition to the uh, the uh, um, section 2 you have the total number of total and uh, employed person you will then will then ask you to 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 tell us wh how many new employees you you hire from January 1st, 2012 to February 28th, 2013. So within that period, that we want to know how many persons, what positions, mm -hmm. okay, what type of qualifications, okay, what, was it either uh, part-time or, or, or full-time, okay, how long the position w uh, became available. So we need, need to know everything about, this, about the, the, these new employees. So, so, so in, in the form on page, as we see in the form here, on, on page three, uh, sorry, on, on page four, it will give you all the information. And we're asking uh, em employers to get ready, you know, prepare yourself, do your homework. So when we send it out to you, it will be easier. 
So you're, not, you're just prepping them now? Yes, yes, we are prepping them now. So we want to know, for example, the, the nature of uh, employment. We, so they, this will tell you all, all of the new employees in, uh, in, in Section 2. Okay. In Section 3, now, it will tell you about vacancies. Okay. So we need to know in, in Section 3 what type of vacancies you have within your organization. We need to know the, the, the nature of the uh, opening. We, we, need, we need to know how many vacancies you have within, within your uh, organization. We want to know what are some of the minimum qualifications for the uh, vacancies. We want to also know what type of certification is required. We also would like to know the, the nature of employment. Okay, is, 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 uh, is a vacancy a, a permanent Sorry. employment, temporary uh, employment, so we need to know as much, inf we need to get as much information as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And also, we want to know what time the position became uh, available. So it's, it's so we're asking the the uh, um, employers to be prepared. You know, get the information. You know, uh, go the, the, the this this information. The, the the questionnaire will be on the government's website. It's not there. Yet. No. I, no, but it will, will be on on the government website. So at least you you can go on that and uh, and at least you know you know do some do your do your your um, fill, fill out. Fill, at least fill out, try to fill out the, the questionnaire and wait until we, 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 get, we, we send the information to, uh, to you. Section four will talk about recruitment. So we, we want to add and find out what are some of the recruitment challenges em employers are, face, are facing. Do you, are you, you have challenges, any challenge recruiting locally? And if so, what are some of, some of the challenges? So in section four will basically t tell, tell us that. It, so we also would like to know our, our, um, what are some of, uh, if you recruit it within certain local uh, um, organizations, do you re -re recruit persons from secondary school, you know, Abyss, uh, do you recruit persons from the Hospitality Institute? So we want to get a broad cross-section of your recruiting uh, uh, activities within your organization. We, we have now on, in section five of the questionnaire, these were the competencies within the organization, or the competencies of new re recruit. What type of competencies do, do they possess? Okay, you know, we are in terms of um, attitude, in terms of behavior, skill, uh, knowledge, skills, these persons, how, how do they fit in? Um, uh, do they have a, a bad attitude, a negative attitude? Uh, are, they, are they good on the, on, the, on the job? We need to find <coughs> out for, their, their custom, for, for, for the customer. So we're asking the employers, to, to, to do a, a, a scan in, in your organization and, and you, you take a couple of minutes and find out ab about the employees and wait until we... So uh, we these, this, this section yes. um, primarily deals with the, uh, specifically deals with the newly employed persons, those persons employed between January 2012 and February 2013. Yes. So I think that needs to be it yes. is clear that it's not all the employees in the organization right. that right. they're going to be doing that with. Yes, yes. But just with those the who have been employed yes, in the last yes. 13 yeah. months. Yes, because uh, yes, because I said, you know, from 2009, there, there was a, a, a significant shift in the world in terms of the unemployment. You know, they had a recession, so mm -hmm. at least, you know, the, the country, most countries uh, had challenges in terms of unemployment, so we, we were trying to know what we were trying to get it to ascertain the, that information. Uh, in uh, in section six, deal with the change in uh, in employment size. So now we would like to know how if there was an the increase or decrease in your employment size or, or over the, the past uh, okay. the, yeah, two, from 2009. Yeah, mm. yeah, things mm. getting better. At, uh, you know things remain the same in, in your organization. We just want to get you know a, a, an idea of what what is. I think that is a, that is a good um, that's, a, that's a great question to ask to, so that we can get a sense of what is really happening in the economy. Yes, yes, yes. And in addition, we also would like to know what type of of positions you intend to, to hire, what, what type of uh, occupation or over okay. the next um, so um, couple of years. No accident to look ahead. Yes, yes, What their yes. plans are with respect to Right, right. And because, because what is happening is that <coughs> it is, things would not remain the same. Okay, the recession is now, yes, we're getting out of, of the recession. We have to plan, and, and, and that's why I, you know, I always commend the, the government or the, what, for 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 establish for embarking on this survey 
because this is, is historic, because this has never been done. This shows that somebody is, is thinking, somebody is planning, somebody is thinking for the future. So I think, uh, I think the, this, you know, the, the, this is very, very important. Or in section seven, talks about the importance <coughs> of skills for employment. What, what type of skills they are person, their employees. And that would also tie in with the information that goes to the labor department for, um, for our training. What type, what type of skills? We, we know we, the, the employer will need to tell us what is important for him. Okay? What, what is important? What am I looking for? Mm -hmm. And section seven basically would, would handle that. And, and in um, section, so in uh, section eight talks about since that we are, we are regional. That's on section eight, two. Yeah, uh, yeah. Section eight, that's on page 10. Oh, on the same page? Yes. Okay, since you're regional, we want to know the, if, if employers recruit re regionally. Um, if, uh, if they're aware of the uh, Caribbean vocational ed uh, education, the um, CVQ, if, if they're uh, if they have about the, of the CSME, all of the, the, the because we, we all of the, the different in institution that, that issues certification, we, we want to know how, 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 how they are. Okay. Um, with respect to this survey, I, I know that you would be, you would have been the chief person in designing the survey, but did you have input from persons in the labor department um, with respect, was it circulated and discussed and critiqued and amended and so on so that you have what would be the best survey? Well, yes, I think it was a very, very uh, rigorous process. I think that we were <laughs> agitated a lot. Okay. I think that Miss uh, Charles uh, is, is, is a very go. good team leader, I think, <laughs> <laughs> together with uh, Dr. Gail Archibald and oh, Mr. Okay. Uh, Kentish. I think it's 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 a it's a team effort. Team effort okay, definitely. we looked at the the long term, uh, the objective of the of our terms of reference, what we want, what we're looking for, and collectively. We were able to come out with an instrument which uh, we think is is robust enough that we're able to 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 get the information that we uh, we are want. Okay, um, just one reminder of viewers and listeners again that you are watching Labor Matters, and tonight we have in the launch of the Employer Skills Demand Survey, which is a prerequisite for the, uh, the 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 social program within the Labor Department, which will offer employment and training to deserving qualified person who qualify under the, 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 the system. And um, we have Mr. Justin Peer, who is the labor market consultant, Mr. Aker Stowe, who's been keeping very quiet, um, with, um, <laughs> president of the Employers <laughs> Federation, Ms. Gina Charles, who is the uh, technical coordinator, and um, from what I've been hearing from Mr. Kentish, she has the biggest job of all. <laughs> and um, Mr. Pascal Kentish, who is the assistant labor commissioner in the labor department, but has now taken on a title with respect to this specific project, the key project implementation leader. Um, we are inviting your calls. The number to call is 462. To 996 to pose your questions, to make your comments, to let us know whether or not this is something that is worth having, to, uh, to let us know how you are willing to cooperate with the process, to let us know what else you think should be added and how you think about the entire, not just the labor demand project, but the entire program with respect to the temporary employment and the training program. And as I speak, there's a first call on the line. Good evening, caller. Welcome to Labor Matters. Good evening. Good evening. I listen to this program, you know, and I get the impression that there are persons on the panel laughing after Antigua. Now, Mr. Mr. Williams, you say Mr. Stowe is an employer. You know, Mr. Stowe used to work with Illuminati. And then he and his partner broke with from him and a farm owned company. Would that be classified as the kind of employers we're talking about? Well, and I hear Mr. Pierce say, it's the first time we're doing this survey. 
how this come the first time we're doing this survey. We have done this survey all the time. And Mr. Williams, you see them consultants that we have now? They are consultants all their life. Because in ILO and in the United Nations, they are a clique of them that give them work all over the world. But you will never hear one of them talk about any results. Any company that wants to pilot over here, what kind of company that? Any company that wants to pilot, look. And you see what he's doing there? He's antique people have to pay for that, you know? That is part of the loan we have to pay for everything they're masquerading us in doing. And Mr. Williams, they, none of them. Mr. P not better than you. The lady not better than Kentish. It's because the comedy is fine colors and fool antiques all the time. But they can't fool me. I've been around ILO. I've been around the all the time. And I see them come as consultants. Ask him how long he's a consultant. And that should tell you the kind of person they are. Have a good day and talk fool antique people. Thank you for your call, caller. Thank and you. Um, Thank you very much. Um, let us just proceed. <laughs> along our path, uh, having heard that, uh, that comment from that caller. Uh, the, the, the labor employer demand, uh, the employer skills demand Sir. survey. Um, how, how long is it, is it expected to last? Okay. We are planning to, to, to launch it it, the duration of the survey will be for 21 days. 21 so, days. Yes. Okay. So from the, the from the 21st of March to the 10th of April. So we are asking uh, employers to submit all or to uh, to return all of the information yeah. to us by at least the the 9th of um, of April. So you're counting today as. One of the days. Well, yes, yes, yes. But we, we are planning to, 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 to finish, get all the information. Because it takes about 20 minutes, between 20 minutes and um, half, and half an hour to fill out the uh, survey. So I mean, we, we mm -hmm. think that um, hopefully we will be able to get a good rate of rate return. OK, so what are the sources to which this survey will be made available to these 200 employers? Yeah, 210, yes. What, what we, we will contact them via email. Okay, we'll send the survey out to them. They will fill out the email, fill it out, and return it to us. So you have already identified the 200 employees that you're going to We, we, we have an idea, yes, and who, who are, are we. Yes. OK, have you identified them? You would have gotten the information, so you'd be easily yes. able to yes. put the information out. OK, let's go back to the phone lines. Good evening, caller. You only matters. Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I want to make a few um, observations, and I want to first ask some questions. Go ahead. Um, listening to the panel tonight, I just want to clarify that I've heard them correctly. What y'all are basically saying is that Antiguan workers are so expensive that the government have, of Antigua has to be going to the World Bank to subsidize the um, cost of labor and to assist businesses in Antigua mm. to hire workers and to pay them. It seems that is what you're saying to me. Yeah. Well, um, I guess since that is what is happening in this case, and we as a people will have to eventually repay that loan, I want to make a few suggestions. Based on what I've seen um, in the draft labor code, too, I want to make these suggestions in light of those things. What we need in Antigua is to recognize that the most productive workers are in, indeed Christian workers. Okay? Because of that, we have to be training our young people and our workers among ethical lines so that they recognize that when they are hired, they give a fair day's work for fair day's pay. Since they're the most productive, their work will have a multiplying effect so that others will have jobs 
becoming available to them along the line and along the, as time passes. All right? If that does not happen, what you're going to have occur is that people will be put in positions where they are unsuitable and will be unproductive in those positions. And because they're unproductive in those positions, they will have to find other ways of making themselves, um, um, how can you see, eligible for the jobs. So instead, you will find that they will, for example, go with managers, have children, accept the jobs to um, basically account for their productivity. All right, they will act basically in sinful manners. What? I want to indicate to you all is that in these days and in these times, we cannot afford for these kind of things to happen. We must make sure our workforce is an ethical, Christian-trained workforce. On the other side, too, it happens with the managers. Within the top echelons of the um, organization, we must also have people who are ethical and productive. Hence, you want to put in your Christian workers in there, too. Otherwise, you're going to have, instead of productivity, you're going to have reduced work productivity, and hence your workers who suffer will suffer under the managers who are hired. Thank you very much. Okay, Carla, thank you for your contribution. Um, Jeanette, you look anxious to respond to that, Carla. Just responding um, in terms of whether or not Antiguan labor is so expensive that we have to take a loan to supplement jobs. And, and, and for persons to be clear, these projects, the temporary employment and the training program, are part of what's termed internationally as active labor market programs. These are programs such as temporary employment, training program, where persons actively engage in economic activity and develop work, work experience, participate and, and, and gain work experience, and develop skills. They happen mostly during times of crisis where you would see these types of programs um, increasing in the numbers that are available because that is the time when you need to prepare for coming out of the crisis. One, you need to support the, the decrease in economic activity that has happened without creating a welfare state. So the government of Antigua and Barbuda would not be comfortable with handing out checks for able-bodied persons that we are going to need to, to, to support the economy through mixing their labor in times to come. So this is in no way a replacement or a supplement to an employer. Let's please understand that we are not giving people jobs. We're giving persons an experience. The opportunity become more employable. So temporary employment is just that. This is not a program where any employer gets supplemented in no way, shape, or form. Can the beneficiaries of this program, meaning persons that are on a temporary employment program, work continuously? It is for six months and six months only. Within that six months, they would have participated in new activities within the gov within Antigua and Barbuda through local organizations, meaning statutory bodies or nonprofit organizations that specifically design projects for this program. So, for example, um, I like to give the big church example. <laughs> Two situations. If, if, for example, my church, St. Joseph Sandlikin, is in need of a roof, is in need of a new roof, and we really are in need of a new roof, they cannot call the project and say, I'm going to put in a proposal. They can, but it would not be accepted to put in a proposal that says, we want to fix our roof so our parishioners can come and feel comfortable because, you know, we're all that matters. That is not acceptable. However, if Big Church, as we know it as, which is a Nash, which is an, a historic site, is renovating and they choose to put in a wheelchair accessible ramp that will increase opportunity and availability to 
nationals, citizens, residents, and visitors of Antigua and Barbuda to come to this historic site, then they could actively, they could submit a proposal under the temporary employment project. This could not be, though, that Big Church would have started a project, realized that they need 15 workers, decided, well, we're not going to pay 15 persons, we're just going to hire two and we'll get the balance from the temporary employment. That is not the way it works. This project in no way displaces workers. It does not intend to discourage employers from continuing to hire persons for long-term employment. It is exactly what we say it is. It is a work experience for low-income, low-skilled persons who when the crisis lifts, must start gaining at this time an ability to compete and to participate in acti economic activity. We expect that to be full-time, meaningful employment or some level of, of, of self-employment, um, starting your own small business or something of that nature. Secondly, the, temp the training program, also a six-month cycle, is for the same category of persons, but for those with a greater level of skill. Again, not displacing anyone or supplementing any employer because they cannot pay and our wages are so high. It has nothing to do with the wages in Antigua and Barbuda. It is, a, it, it is an immediate response to an economic crisis that is proven and tested throughout the world. And yeah. why not Antigua? to prepare our own people to be ready to compete when we get back on our feet. Okay, and they want to come in, Mr. Pierre, but big on the lines, keep your thoughts and okay. we get there. Good evening, caller, you only matters. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Very pleasant good evening to you all. Good evening. Good evening. And, and I do affirm what the previous input was, the concerns. I, I don't know why we keep on niching these type of programs that eventually, because money are around, we, find, we, 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 we are happy to niche programs that nobody benefits. No persons who should be in the frame of which we're talking about okay. do benefit. There is no situation in Antigua there to train anybody so that they will get off the idea of, um, they will get on the idea of discipline to work. They will go there just for the money, and the people who are organizing it are just there for the money, and it's just um, a circle they're going around into. More so, I would like to know why is a third world government like ours have also gone around the circles of finding ways for people to be employed but do not of themselves engage in providing employment for people of which they, they should be the interventionist ensuring that young people have jobs and young people are contributing to the taxation to social security and the education levels what kind of economic economic advice has been given to this government that doesn't understand it's a third world country and it has to have social effect of all types, mainly helping to provide jobs for young people when they leave school so that they can have confidence going out in the workplace and that they can make instant contribution to the hard put taxation and social security system. Why are they doing these things that are little niches but will never work out to be anything. And like I said, I confirm the, the principles of that young lady, that lady who spoke, um, 
and talking about the working ethics, work discipline, and so on. Work discipline is not going to come into Antigua people in a hurry. It's not going to come at all. Okay, go on. We got your point. Thank you. We need, we need to give the person a chance. Thank you very much, sir. I just want to respond to that caller. I am so pleased and happy to hear the caller say that one of the things we need to address is work discipline. Um, that is primarily what this program aims to do. One of the things we have said with both components, the training program and the temporary employment program, it's not just you walk to a work site, somebody gives you a check and you don't even show up. I can understand your concern because perhaps our history has not been as effective as it should have been. This program, in addition to the experience of work, provides for life skills, basic skills, what some persons still call basic brotopsy. <laughs> um, so things that we have been complaining that we're not seeing when persons come into the workforce, meaning presentation, job readiness, um, being punctual, um, professionalism in terms of how you approach others, how you work with others, the ability to make decisions, the ability to reason. Those are the types of skills that couple the work experience. If we were just to give people jobs or put them on the side of the road to do something, we'd be wasting taxpaying dollars and that is not what this is about. This is about creating and developing a change in the way we look at work in Antigua and Barbuda for persons who right now are very unemployable. If we do not help those persons to move into employability, we are creating welfare. Yes. We refuse and, to do that. Yeah. This is about active employment. This is about participating in the economic development of our country. We're starting here because of the crisis. What does this lead to? For, and I, and I, and I heard Mr. Rose say, oh, we've been doing these surveys for so long, I'd love to see the documentation because for some reason they seem to have gotten lost. I'm not doubting you, but no one seems to know where to find them. What is happening with this is not only is it evidence-based decision-making, meaning from the employer skills demand survey, we're then able to say, let's look at particularly in our most productive sectors, what they are concerned about, they meaning the employers that they're not finding in employees, so they're going elsewhere. And let's create that where we can and how we can in our own citizens so that they are better able to accept, to, to move forward in these opportunities. Um, so love the dialogue, love, love, love what's happening, but it seems to be a bit of confusion. And again, I can understand some callers except for the callers of a certain age being concerned, because perhaps we've been there, done that, but never like this. Not just this, not just that, this is a performance-based program. We're not just looking at counting sheep, meaning I've moved sheep from one pen to the other, so I'm gonna pat myself on the back as if I've done something great. The sheep would move themselves eventually, but what we're looking at is what was the outcome if you move the sheep from one side of the pen to the other, was the quality of the feed when you slaughter that sheep, what is, was it better? Did they graze better? I mean, I'm using sheep, not that I'm saying people are sheep, because I know somebody might call in and say that, <laughs> but just so that I'm a country girl, so just so we have a common understanding. We're looking at outcomes of this program. If we find that this program is not really benefiting persons, if we find that months from now we're not seeing after having participated in the project when we know that jobs are available these persons are not becoming employable we have to go back to pack and find out why not so we're not just looking at output we're looking at the outcome did this make a meaningful difference in the employability of low income low skilled persons between the ages of 17 to 15. So I hope everyone understands okay, that. Okay, we are rapidly running out of time. We're taking our last call. Good evening, caller. Your only matters. Good evening, caller. Yep. Yes. Very quickly. It's unfortunate we'll be hearing the, this negative reaction. Nonetheless, I think all the ideas will converge. 
Listen, I am suggesting that we restyle that thing instead of calling it temporary employment or clearly state what is the objective. Work to create work experience to create work experience. What I'm concerned about is we have had those things already. The question of sustainability in terms of um, what happens after the training. Surely, um, the example which was used, say, with the Anglican Church, I think the project should, coming from the World Bank, should have a component which would support the employment. It's not a matter that and, um, we have to ask World Bank to um, assist us in paying our laborers. But the point is that the, um, that example, the Anglican Church definitely would not be able to do that. But on a more general scale, it is very unfortunate that we are doing these things in a very piecemeal fashion. What we really want is a manpower survey which will deal with the whole question of the human resources and how we use it. For example, and also it's coming in a situation piecemeal again. We do not know the level of unemployment and the skills availability. The other thing is that it seems as though we are getting, we are seeking to get information from employers. But what about um, finding out what is coming out of the school, the level of training and things like that. You might wish in the end to adjust the survey to find out the level of training, the kind of skills which are coming out of the schools. But basically I think the program is a very useful program and um, it we might wish to consider dropping this title temporary employment or fully explain what it is all about. That is to provide work experience and ensure that when that is done, that that training is sustainable, not just, and that would be my um, contribution, Thank taking into account the level of time available. Thank you very That's much, That's actually Carla. an and excellent point. The program itself, Temporary Employment and Training Program are international terms. The name of this program is the Antigua and Barbuda Skills Training and Employment Empowerment, Empowerment Program, I'm sorry, it's the Antigua and Barbuda Skills Training and Empowerment Program. Because we have not signed off on the agreement with the World Bank at this point, the project is still referred to in the general terms, temporary employment and training program. But we do, we will promote it as the Antigua and Barbuda Skills Training and Empowerment Program once approval is gained. Thank you for your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're gonna have to come back. <laughs> um, we're totally out of time now. <laughs> and, um, I, I see um, Alex waiting patiently to give his technical views. Um, so just give some very brief closing remarks. I'll, I'll start Mr. Kentish, very brief. Yeah, um, I would like to encourage um, the employers to participate in this um, um, survey to help inform us as to what, what direction we need to go with respect to um, employees' training in Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you, Mr. Kentish. I think Gina already gave a closing remark. So let's go to Mr. Stowe. <laughs> Again, the Employers Federation <laughs> totally embraces this initiative and we wish to encourage all employers to be a major part of this initiative. And again, it is for the fact that we are going to get empirical data that will help us in our decision-making process. Thank you, Mr. Stowe and Mr. Beer. Yes, uh, thank you. I would also like to encourage the employers to participate and uh, we would like to, um, to, so that we, we can make this a very worthwhile event. Thank you, and thank you, panelists, collectively, for, um, I, I, I did say at the beginning that I didn't think it's going to be in